We spoke a few weeks ago about the wonderful mutation that the entertainment industry has gone through, and that it has afforded us, the gamers and consumers, a chance to dip our toes into familiar waters. It is one thing to take thematic cues from the past, nods or odes to a bygone era, and spend a moment reminiscing about days behind us. Across the road from that is a completely different type of game, the play of dredging up a classic and handing it over to a new generation, or at the very least, allowing that previous generation who was around the first time a chance to relive a perceived magical experience. Whether the nostalgia paints a previous product in an unflattering light by today's standards is a completely different therapy session. Chances are, as it seems, that the thing, that holy grail, you remember from your youth, was only that because of a specific time and place. Ignorantly, we pry and prod creators to return to those pastures, only to realize that the grass has spoiled with invention and advancement over the years. After more than two decades of asking for it, Nintendo and Pokemon fans can rejoice because new Pokemon Snap is here, and it actually might have held up. I am Wyatt Fawcett, and this is The First Bite. Much like it did in the 1990s, the pitch for Pokemon Snap in 2021 might be the most difficult and seemingly synthetic idea for a video game of all time. Just the taglines have magical and mystical ability to somehow put people to sleep. It becomes very difficult to conclude an elevator pitch if everyone in the moving box is snoring by the end. Here's the gist of it. Pokemon Snap is an on-rails, first-person camera game where you frantically have to try to capture still images of Pokemon in their sort of natural habitat. All for the sake of cataloging. Well, Nintendo, what happened to the Pokedex work we've been doing over the last 20 Pokemon mainline games? Well, that's apparently gone. Lost to time. Do we at least get to collect the Pokemon and train them? Evolve them? Care for them? No. We don't. Can we at least have the tools to make sure that we get really cool and interesting photographs? Or slow down the tram to catch the important moments? Absolutely not. In fact, your favorite photos will almost definitely look exactly the same as everyone else's that have taken the Pokemon Snap Tour. But the question remains, why on earth is Pokemon Snap so much fun, even now? 22 years after the launch of the original, new Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo Switch is essentially the most satisfying and panic-inducing, frantic first-person camera shooter known to humankind. It is exhilarating. Incredibly devoid in the personality of the thing, new Pokemon Snap matches almost indistinguishably from the original. Aside from the updated graphics and the new additions to the Pokemon family, and this makes it a magical thing. Is it a trick of the light? Or am I having an incredibly fun and palpably exciting time taking the slow coaster around the track over and over again? Trying to spot something different happening in this world than the last time we came around? Regardless of whether or not they're pulling one over on me, everything in this game world works. Never have I felt more anxiety hands riddled with panic at the thought of missing the perfect moments in these pocket monsters' lives. Strewn about the track, I ride along like a living amusement park ride without the uncanny valley animatronics. Somehow, the hooks get dug in pretty quickly, and despite the lengthy and prolapsed tutorial that consists of walking players through the use of it the least complicated game mechanics this side of 52 card pickup, it still managed to pique my interest and gather my attention. Almost in spite of the stretched out mechanical introduction, the rollout of certain biomes alongside shifting actions by Pokemon along those paths, it's not difficult to lose hours replaying the same track. Most of all, this incessant need to retake the same photographs with slight differences 
is born from meticulous prosecution, judgment, and ratings from your new professor. That diamond rating is a high that few other games can dose out, and I'm always striving to reach it. Each of the Pokemon out in the wild, which feels an awful lot like they've been herded into a pen to play nice and have fun while tourists snap photos, never to be free, has four photo album slots, one to four stars. Each of the star ratings within those slots have four tiers, bronze to diamond. And all that said, this stirs a manic desire to acquire diamond status on all four stars, no matter the call of household responsibilities in need of your attention. New Pokemon Snap is therapy. It is disastrous in its attempt to provide solace or comfort, and rather is a flavorful stomping of your most anxious strands of DNA. Never have I screamed as wildly in fear that a Bidoof doing a cute thing behind me will go unseen by the academic pocket monster world. A squeal accompanied by an impassioned double stick swinging of the camera only to conclude in missing the moment and handing over yet another photograph of the beaver-like creature walking away from me. Oh, how many Bidoof Badonkadonk photos must Professor Mir have in his possession with my signature on it? And I'm so sorry. There must have been a grander purpose behind the creation of the Laboratory of Ecology and Natural Sciences, or LENS, if you like camera puns, Bidoof Booty Gallery notwithstanding. With help from Nintendo and the Pokemon Company, Bandai Namco has truly given gamers a reason to bask in nostalgia, because the new Pokemon Snap is hours upon a mountain of fun to be had. But what's next? Nintendo has been playing a weird game of late. Bringing Pokemon Snap out of the tomb is just one strung along the line of interesting choices. It's cobweb clearing. Amongst the many, this summer we'll see the remaster of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword finally sit up from the grave that is the Wii U console. And if Nintendo continues to seek guidance from the past, then we are in for some pretty fantastic trips down memory lane. Luckily, Nintendo seems to care more than the average shill about pulling moss off of their rocks, so these experiences should at least live up to the expectations of fans that were around the first time these games came out. New Pokemon Snap feels like the right move right now, but the timing is a bit suspicious. If this title had come out during an on year, alongside a mainline Pokemon title, then I would chalk it up to a flooding of the wonders that is the cute monsters and soft RPG elements provided to gamers for decades. However, being that Pokemon Sword and Shield came to us in 2019, and the recently announced Pokemon Legends Arceus is unlikely to come around until the light touches the final moments of 2022, or even beyond, New Pokemon Snap feels like a tray of appetizers your aunt brings out for everyone to hold the group over until the real meal comes. Rather than playing the part of an auxiliary piece of media, a taste for the fandom already stuffed full of gaming goodness, this game has to hold the weight of the franchise as it stands, setting it up to disappoint some major fans of the series, so just be warned. If you're in the cohort of Nintendo 64 diehards, or Pokemon fans, or collectathon aficionados, the new Pokemon Snap is probably going to be a fantastic game for you. At the full price of a premium game, however, the depth and lacking of intricacies may make you feel like there is twice the needed cost of entry. As mentioned earlier, new Pokemon Snap is set up in a way that really wants to hold up the table balancing the franchise that is Pokemon and the attention of its fans. There isn't a lot of hope that the latest game in the mainline series will arrive this side of Nintendo launching the Switch Pro, which makes new Pokemon Snap a tasty bite to satiate fans for the time being. And I don't know if it's a big enough bite. But if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, Badoof booties, Pokemon, grab your camera, hop on the trolley, 
and get ready to feel the most intense pressure to perform that you have ever been artificially inseminated with. I want to say thank you to everyone that's been so kind and generous with their time and praise on social media. You can find me at Wyatt Fawcett on Twitter, which is the best place to say hi. We are also launching a Canadian-based video game newsletter that's going to be launching on Mondays. So if you're interested in what the Canadian video game development industry has to offer, with uh, succinct and diverse bits of news coming out of the country, uh, definitely feel free to subscribe to our newsletter. I will post a link in the comments below. It's a really easy read, short newsletter, and pulls from all sorts of sources talking about big news in the Canadian video game scene. It's sort of a companion newsletter to this podcast where we talk about one particular game or one particular feeling and we wanted to focus on canadian video games because there's so much great stuff happening in our country we are from canada i'm proud to be canadian and our industry here is insanely talented and working hard all the time and we just feel like there's not a lot of focus on what's happening in Canada. So, again, we will post the link for sign up to our newsletter in the description. Thank you so much for saying hi and listening. We hope you have a great weekend, and don't forget to get out there and take pictures of those Pokemon. We'll see you next week.